Welcome to the channel we make your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Yang Yo and I'm YouTube Visa Consultant. Are you interested about migrating to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the little bell on the side so once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one to getting over the inside. Now, what had happened these few days, obviously, there is a change of politics and parties going on. So the former government, the Liberal, uh, is obviously not the current government anymore. So Labour Party has actually won the election on the 21st of May, claiming, claiming the 47th Parliament with the 31st new Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese who has actually been very busy with the first day flying into Tokyo, attending the Quad uh, meeting and summit, and due to fly back to Australia for more management to be done. So what do we expect? What is the expectation of the Labour Party, the Labour government, and the new Albanese government? Uh, will actually implement an effect on the immigration policy. I think this is what a lot of people uh, is actually very um, not concerning but wanting to know uh, is there an opening up of the policy more relaxation more quarter uh, and faster processing time I think that's what people is expecting so obviously the population of Australian citizen has actually voted for a change a major overhaul and change uh, over the past two years obviously there's a pandemic um, we know knowingly there has been a lot of news article talking about the former government and obviously the former Prime Minister Scott Morrison talking about an overhaul change of the migration program getting more quota and things uh, but it's not actually happening. It, well, it, it did, but well, not good enough, should I say. So obviously, uh, the Australian has, uh, citizen has, uh, has voted for major change. So what do we expect? Let's go back to the history and see the previous Labour government just right before Liberal uh, took on the centre stage uh, and what was their policies and how we are expecting how I uh, with historical data and prediction perhaps it may be true uh, but just add on some of my opinion on the second half of this video so let's, let's have a look who do we expect to be the next Minister of immigration so i've searched it uh, obviously the uh, anthony albanese the current prime minister had, was so busy uh, getting um, suits packed up and flying to japan for the meeting so what we have seen now here is basically there's no immigration minister yet no minister for home affairs yet so the government's changed following federal election on 21st of may Portfolio of ministers will be uh, when in full ministry is sworn in and expected on Wednesday, 1st of June. Uh, what's today's day? I think there's about two weeks ago or less. So 1st of June, we'll get a new minister for immigration, new minister for home affairs. Perhaps a policy will then be announced. Well, very exciting. There were so many policies that we expected. Um, perhaps just around March and April, but I think the former government, due to the election campaign, they have um, sought not to announce any policies, just to stick with their root uh, voters uh, and their fans. Uh, obviously, they did. However, they have lost a major back battleground. Um, as we have seen how the uh, business uh, and industrial group and council had came out and uh, really uh, not happy, unhappy about Scott Morrison not raising the annual intake quota. So obviously losing some of the vote there, uh, perhaps maybe a little bit more, uh, but we'll see what will happen. So let's talk about what the previous Labour government uh was then so i wanted to give you a little rewind back to the history 
in 2009 and 10, just right before uh, Liberal government uh, taking on the center stage in one election uh, during those periods. So at, at that point of time, uh, the Prime Minister was Kevin Rudd, uh, who's pretty famous, who's now in, uh, resided in Washington uh, with the Asia Study Industry or Asia Study Council. Anyway, expertise in Asia Studies. So back then, look at this, the date was, this news is back in 23rd October 2009. Rudd welcome Big Australia. I wanted to take you a little bit of what Big Australia is all about. So Big Australia... Well, back then, there was a huge debate whether they want a big population or a lesser population with very restricted uh, immigration policy. So obviously, uh, Labour lost it and Liberal won. And that's how we've seen for seeing the, those uh, back in the fi uh, last five, six years. Uh, you've seen all the changes from... Uh, 190,000 annual intake down to 160,000 and a lo lot of skilled migration visa has been halted, delayed. Obviously, they said about um, uh, about the pandemic, but also what about employment sponsor visa? A major change from 457 to 482 make it really hard. So less and less people actually can actually come and migrate to Australia. So that was back in back in those days. So Liberal won due to those opinion uh, but labor back uh, labor back government back then was talking about a big australia the concept of a big australia what is it about it's about federal government uh, wanting australia to get 35 million people by 2050 now we are currently sitting on 25 million there's 10 more million and that means a major uh, migration intake that was the vision I, looking back I think Kevin was right was right about this because uh, if there were more people coming in they were a lot more issues could actually be resolved um, you know in a, in a post pandemic uh, era because there's more resources to be done now as you can see the problem with the pandemic is now lack of skills not enough people uh, policies in, in visa restricting uh, people coming in delay what about nurses and medical people delay uh, the, the 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 red tape on uh, medical professions so uh, you know, people cannot come into Australia in time uh, during pandemic and so that was the that was the problem back then so i would say uh, scott morrison won his his election or liberal government won their elections uh based on restricting immigration and this time in 2022 in the post pandemic era they lost the election based on immigration restriction as well well that's one part of the reason now let's continue to go back here and have a look what big australia is all about so again you can find this in uh, wikipedia so big australia was a term australian prime minister former australian prime minister kevin rudd uh, described increased population australia from 22 million that was back in 2010 uh now it's 25 uh to 36 35 6, 6 million by 2050 now obviously there was a big debate uh kevin Rudd was ousted by uh his uh colleagues julia gila so uh, julia gila was the prime minister for uh, i think three years two or three years a short time uh but basically la still labor government the government was uh, still which you could see uh, they were still in view of big australia although they don't coin the keyword of big australia uh but then they, they're still looking towards uh, a rapid rate well i can't say rapid rate you should will be a rapid rate of population growth there um so what will happen uh if the current albanese government looking forward of what they the the labor government was proposing uh 10 12 years ago uh what will happen next? I mean, we just had the government changing Australia. So what will happen next? So what I will predict, this is based on my um, experience and historical data that I accumulated over the years, almost 20 years. Um, 
but it's based on my opinion uh, and it's not the fact and true so let's talk about the first one will be student visa so obviously uh, student visa uh, Australia wanting to welcome more uh, international students coming back to Australia uh, in way to actually save the industry because the international education industry in Australia suffered badly. I doubt any of these people in the industry will actually voted for Scott Morrison in this election. All of them lost job. All of my friends who are in the marketing position of those university or colleges or private institutions changed jobs or even lost the jobs during these two years obviously you know, the government will will say oh well that's caused by the pandemic well, well what about uk canada and usa they didn't do um those kind of um uh restriction to you know you know letting the whole industry down um but so anyway that's a pass well, let's talk about future so what will be done is if we are to if australia is to allow more international student to coming in probably will have a little bit of change and allowance from the GTE requirement. It's a ministerial in, um, in, uh, instrument, which the Minister of Immigration could, uh, could, could swap it, could, could replace it uh, with a lesser restrictions. So meaning that uh, people applying for student visa is easier to get granted so that people will come in. That's first thing. And secondly is perhaps getting more uh, advantage uh, for graduates. Well, we know that the current Australian, uh, the former Australian government has actually allowing the graduate visa to be extended furthermore. However, with this actually allowing more people emerge, the PSW and graduate work together. So there's no more occupation uh, nominated required or skill assessment required they can automatically go into a graduate work visa allowing more people to come in the study I think that's that's my prediction will be because that will actually uh, help and assist the international education industry uh, in, in a very fast and quick manner otherwise you know the industry is Currently, it's only university surviving. All the other one is struggling. That's the fact out there. Okay, now, secondly, let's talk about employer-sponsored visa. So, I've chatted about so many times about employer-sponsored visa. Obviously, um, they have changed uh, from 457 to 482, which is basically, it's a redundant. And check how they have... Uh, revoke 187 which is regional employment sponsor scheme uh, and replace of the 494 which is really disadvantages to uh, the actual visa holders out there because it's not a permanent resident visa at all um, and the procedure wise it's it's uh, it's just very complicated and, and it's it's not simplified in other words so I, I, I I'm in the view uh, well the former government Back in the Parliament Committee, 2021, early 2021, they were in the view to simplify employment sponsor visa. However, they haven't done so until, well, you know, a couple of days ago. Even they even lost the elections. So I suspect the Labour government will actually implement this, simplify the employment sponsor visa, bringing back the the old regional employment sponsor visa where. Uh, replacing the current 494 perhaps back with something like 187 giving you permanent residency straight away so the re that will actually enhance and help a lot of regional employer I think that's the way to go um, and also um, bring in T TS TSS visa back to where 457 used to be I mean there's no they there's they, there's no purpose of a duplicating job advertisement uh, two uh, two job advertisement and one in job active in, in within the gum website. Um, it's just doesn't really work. And uh, what about the Australian Skilling Fund uh, allowing well wanting, um, or not wanting require the employer to pay those kind of funds? Why, if they already doing a lot of in house training, why would they or why should they pay more? So I think they will 
th there will be change coming up and make it simplify and that will be my expectation and prediction for that now uh talking about family visas obviously the next one uh there has been a lot of delay obviously we're looking at the con contributory uh, parent visa or age parent visa uh back in those days it was waiting for about two years four years now it's like four years and six years or even more uh and what about the delay coming from centering when you have your parent visa and your sponsor you need to um, address to the assurance of support mechanism which which is a huge delay uh, it's not it's not a quick process so once immigration requests for uh, AOS the delay is there and so it's further delay and go on and imagine if there's thousands of applications out there so backlog uh, cause a lot of issue um, labor government is more about family is more about uh, acceptance of um, humanity and things like that not about uh, Liberal Party was back in uh, more about uh, checking, uh, make sure that things are correct, uh, but lack of um, uh, what should I say? Uh, compassion, should I? I think that's the the right word. Do so in in a family visa like this, more compassion should be put in. A Labour government is more about that, so I think there's more support coming in, and uh, obviously that will increase the annual intake. Uh, I'm not too sure how an uh, incoming government could actually change uh, what they have set it up um, well, a couple of months ago. Can they change it for a new financial year? Perhaps, yes. How would that be actually being enforced? I'm not too sure, but I think that's that's the way to go. Okay, uh, last month at least, let's talk about obviously skill visa. And that include be uh, the BIP and GTI. Uh, so BIP is the traditionally that's that's the name for business innovation. So it's, it's for investors, for people with money coming to Australia and invest, and they get a visa. Uh, now obviously BIP and GTI has been uh, halved, uh, almost half of their quarter, and put those quarter too. If you follow my channel previously, that's Scott Morrison's policy. Put those uh, halved quarter, so they they minus those quarter and take those quarter to the skill uh, visas looking forward for a new financial year hopefully everyone's all these graduate all these skill workers all these skilled graduate or profession uh, will not longer to wait for roi eoi for one year two year um you know I, i've got psychologists with uh i perfect english result and no quarter to actually get nominated and you know the, and this is all the problems so all these will be distributed to all the different um stay and territories so I, I suspect that more quarter will be uh put in end and all what we're talking here is basically it it, it requires a major increase of the current annual intake or permanent residency and i think the labor government will welcome that obviously that will help the inter international education industry because more people come likely to come and study help uh, the whole economy and the industry uh and then they will uh, looking forward to be stay uh permanently because look labor government was on the view that uh, if we want people to come why don't we offer them a permanent result we don't want people to come and they need to go so why would people come anymore well that's very very true so i think those age will come back uh we'll see until a first of june where the uh, the the new minister of immigration sworn in uh whether the policy will that would require to work with the treasurer uh whether they can alter in allowing annual intake to be increased during a post pandemic era which is very likely because it's not in a normal uh, transform um, of um, government uh, we have just been through a two years of COVID-19 pandemic which is very extreme you know once in a century so I think that there will be a policy and procedure it can actually be invoking that and allowing more annual intake to be coming in maybe perhaps just right before july anyway should you have more question and query more than welcome to leave a comment right down below yeah see you next video goodbye